Hello, everybody. Let me... some things together so y'all can listen to some Miles Davis while I get my tea together. I don't even think I put the water on. I'll be right back. Hello, everybody. I'm getting my tea together. We'll be getting into this book in a minute. So introduce yourself as you come in and welcome. Have some lunchtime tea and um, book review. Started a little late with my water for my tea, so it is what it is. Oops, I don't want to. Hello, Echo. Starting a little late with my water for my tea, so. Yeah, I don't want that. It is what it is. Let's see how I can. Oops. And I am going to, I think there was. Let me see if I can find it. I'm going to put the, um, the link for, um, for StreamYard if you want to be a part of the panel um, in the link. So um, you can come in as you want and drop out as you want. If you have something to talk about, that's what we're going to do. Let me get my tea together. Oh 
right, all right, all right. Just waiting for other people to join. Still haven't got my water all hot yet, but we will be good. So I don't know if you guys got your books or not. I'm right here. I ain't got some honey on my hands. Look at me just, <laughs> me and this tea. We're just going to keep it casual, y'all. So interact with me. I'm just going to, you know, enjoy, have some conversation, um, hopefully some good feedback on um, some of the things that I think are important in this book The first for the first um, couple chapters in the intro. Um, let me get this water and I'll be all right back. I'm ready. I am ready. I think I, I've made a concoction that's kind of like, you know, Starbucks's, um, um, what do they call it? Medicine ball. So I got some peach tea, some mint tea, add a little lemon in there, some honey. And um, I put a little um, vitamin C in mine. So let's get started, ladies. So the book. Um, we Should All Be Millionaires um, by Rachel Rogers. So um, I'm excited about this. And reading, let me turn down my Miles Davis. <laughs> I'm all up here in the Zen mode, you know, got some jazz going in the background, got my book, got some candles going. So got my natural hair. So just come, come on with me, ladies. Come on with me. So we're going to get started, and um, uh, from the beginning, and like I said, if you want to come into the chat and um, just make a comment actually on live, there is a link that's in the comment section. You can just um, come in, and I'll add you to the panel. Um, we'll just keep on doing that throughout the, um, the, the, the live. So um, in the intro, oh, thank you, Boo. Thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> I, I say when I get my hair curly and it's wild, it's not really wild today. I'm on my creative, creative vibe. So this is my creative vibe. <laughs> so American, um, the intro in the first quote says, American doesn't respect anything but money. What our people need is a is a few millionaires. And that was a quote by Madam C.J. Walker. And it gets into her story, uh, probably most of us that will be listening to this or on this um, live or um, know about Madam C.J. Walker. And I think that is absolutely true. Money talks. It really does. In every environment that you're in, money talks. And so I feel like not that we're going about it the wrong way. We just need to add on a few things as far as economic status in our communities. Um, so like I said, we'll get get into that a little bit later. Um, another, hey, uh, Rhonda, how are you? You're welcome from, uh, um, about sharing the book. Well, like I said, we're going to get into this. And um, if, you got, if you ladies want to join in on live, like I said, just um, click on the link in the first um, comment with the stream yard, and I'll let you guys speak. So in the intro, it has a lot of information. Um, and it, um, let me just go down. So another quote that I like, I said, every woman needs to know what it feels like to weld economic power. That's how we make a change. That's how we serve our children and how we serve the world. Um, and it's another quote, and I'm not going to get this right. And it basically says, um, if we have that point in time where women get together 
and uh, focus their attention basically on something, the world ain't gonna know what that looks like. So this takes it to another level. We use our voices a lot, and I'm probably gonna be real repetitive in some of the stuff I say as we're going through this. We use our, we will our voices a lot. And just with our voices and just our stance alone, we have made change. But imagine getting economic power behind that and doing um, the same thing, not only with our voices, but having money to back that. So I thought that was powerful. Um, still in the intro, it breaks down some data. Um, and some of this, like I said, we may have known, but some of it we may have not. It says a white woman makes 79 cents compared to the dollar that white men make. Black women make 63, uh, 62 cents to that dollar. Women also pay more for their debts than men, less likely to invest than men, and um, therefore 80% more likely to be impoverished, impoverished in retirement. When it comes to business, women entrepreneurs raise less money than men, and only 2% that's crazy. 2% of women-owned businesses ever hit the seven-figure mark. All of this despite the fact that research shows that women are better investors and better leaders than men. Why do you think that, for those that are watching? I just, um, it gets into it later in this book, but a lot of what we face, just like in the disenfranchised communities, is that is lack of knowledge or just an inhibiting factors that we we see that whether it's, um, you know, systematic um, oppression because we are natural. Yeah, we are. We're natural planners and we we um, I think we're better multitask taskers as well, we know how to get things done in different areas, uh, just naturally. I don't know what that's from, but um, like just get on a personal you know, I remember after my parents divorced, my mom was always the better financial head leader of that house. So she always thrived. So um, I don't know. It's just, it's in a, it's an innate, not within all of us, but I, I feel like it's an innate ability. Um, let me, did I do that? I don't know. I'm going to add you, Coach Mail. And that's a stream. Hello. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Do you have some comments on that? Good morning. This was so interesting, Shamila. I just had to jump on here. I was like, no, I, I was. This was awesome. How should I mute my microphone? Because I hear a lot of that. This was so interesting. Because you have um, your um, phone on as well. You still mute it? Oh, well, you're muted right now. Let's. Let me see. Okay. Is that better, Shamila? Yeah. Okay. So, um, what comments do you have on that? Like, just those statistics alone. What would you say about that? Oh, you're muted again. Oh, there you go. I can't hear myself. I'm going to go back out because I can't hear myself. Oh, okay, gotcha. So I'm going to go on, then we'll, we'll come back to you. But um, this book is uh, basically going to um, teach us or instruct us how to build serious wealth. Um, increase your income significantly within a year, um, get on a path to becoming a millionaire within three years, stop getting in our own way, and also increase our power, peace, and joy. And in the introduction, it um, continues, and it says, there are, uh, there's very little uh, any of us can do 
to get paid for our true value of our work, to make our own decisions, to control our own lives, and much less to move women, marginalized communities into society forward without the freedom that money can buy. Um, again, I, a lot of this stuff is absolutely true and these are just quotes as I'm going on, that's through the intro. Um, to claim more power in the world, we need more money. And that's the truth again. Um, everything that we see that has a power influence, has a money influence. Doesn't matter what it is. A lot of uh, uh, well, people that are on my platform, majority, uh, pretty much all are, the, are in the military service. Think about how much money the military, military industrial system has. Think about how much backing that has. And think about the people that wealth that power of that money and what they do with it. Just alone, I, I mean, I know that's a drastic jump between us trying to get our businesses together, but to see it on a higher level of money wields power. And if you have no money, it, you don't have that power backing of you. So us as women, this is something that, uh, let me see what you said, Marilyn, with money, we can change our lives and those in our community, definitely. And um, that's, that's always been a goal of mine is to be able to be financial. I've always had these goals like, oh, I want to be able to have enough money to give away a car or have enough money to buy somebody a house or have enough. I've always had those goals and um, I continue to have them. I really want to be that asset to, um, or that that resource in the community um, greater than myself and my family. Uh, it then says being financially poor can define who you are and shape what you think you are capable of capable of. We see that all the time. Um, military has millions, yes, millions of dollars um, at it, uh, uh, expo exposure, yes, most definitely. I, the, what is it? It's like 600 and something billion or 700 and something? Well, that's the DOD's budget or something like that. Uh, Shmuel Elson, a link to this live. Thank you. The book, the name of the book is We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers. Um, going back to the book and this, uh, the next thing in the intro was saying money also creates power to give us autonomy. We talk a lot about this in the space of, um, of being uh, women of service and also, um, uh, you know, veterans, the autonomy of our bodies. Like when you have enough money in, in this, in that just extends out just as women in general. Women has have always been seen as the lesser, regardless of what it is, but we'll get into later on even why that is economically. But when you don't have autonomy, it allows you to stay in places that you shouldn't be in. And it doesn't uh, allot you the opportunities to get out as fast as you want to when you see the red flags. So like, again, we'll go into that more in depth later. So um, it's, it's harder to advocate for yourself and others without money, autonomy, and power. Very true. Again, uh, we see a lot of marches in our marginalized communities. We see a lot of people, um, you know, you know, advocating with their voice. But when there's no money backing, it's hard to get true actual change. Not that it hasn't happened, but it it takes a long time. It's been creeping over the years in marginalized communities because there's never been a large financial backing behind it, in my opinion. But we'll see in some of the statistics in this book as well. If, a, if we as women are truly passionate about improving our lives, making the world a better place for our children and getting uh, equality for all marginalized people, we all need to step up and make bank. I love how she says that, but it's it's true. Like we all have passion. Like I know everybody that's going to come on this page is brilliant. We we were we could not be here if we didn't have something to to bring 
to ourselves into the greater community. We have great ideas. We got, you know, great businesses. We we have what it takes to make money, but sometimes we don't have the knowledge what it takes to push those ideas forward or to just, you know, organize those ideas in order to do so. So um, again, this is what this time is for. This is what this book is for. Um, we've tried using our voices to speak truth to power. We've tried marching. We've tried writing letters to our representative. We've tried volunteering in our kids' school. We've tried creating organizations and nonprofits in, uh, that advocate for the kind of change we want to see in the world. We've begun to raise hell and use our voices, but need to start playing a different game. Very true. We need to shift our game game and start playing it where we're really power players on in this game um as okay going on as women and especially as women of color we need to wake up to the fact that our rules for playing and winning the game of success aren't the same as men they've had a different blueprint they've had a different roadmap, they've had different resources. Once we understand that and understand where we're, we're at in that, we can create our roots for us. And we, we do that quite well, if you think about it. Once we know how to pivot quite well, just in our day-to-day -day lives. Once we know where we stand, we're like, okay, I understand this, I understand our environment around me, let me pivot. Let me pivot to make this better for myself. So we need to put that towards the same actions we do every day without thinking the pivoting and how to create a better life for ourselves. We need to do that economically. Um, it is good information. I really love the way this woman speaks and we'll get into who she is. She is an attorney. Um, and that she created her own business, well, several businesses, but it was out of everything she's writing in his books. So this is her blueprint for it. Also, we need to shift our, yes, we, and we're going to get into that, shifting our mindsets, because a lot of us, um, and it's just because we literally, whether good or bad, are the product of our environment in some ways, even though we can step out of that and we may have done better than our parents or whatever the situation may be, we still we're still built we're still built up in that and we were built up in that so we might have some lingering thoughts that are you know making us stagnated in this area uh, women need to define success on our own terms and go after our goals in our own ways even if it seems crazy or risky or unusual at the time those are the best, usually the best ideas when we jump into it. Um, if I always say, once I get peace, no matter what it looks like to nobody else, once I get peace within myself, once I, I thought about it, whatever I prayed about it, whatever it was, once I get peace, I'm jumping off in that thing. <laughs> uh, and that's just the way I work. And usually it works out for me. And it's just the truth. Um, in this book, um, as this, the author says, I'm going to help you define your success and chase after your, your goals on your terms. Uh, women have learned to make a matrix ton of excuses why we can't earn as much money as men. This is, this, oh, excuse me, that's a big reason why we're uh, we are not winning the game that men successfully play for years. Most of us aren't even on the game board because we have, have been taught by well-meaning parents, role models in systemic racism and, uh, and sexism, sexism um, to give away key sources. And that can, and she gets into it, but intellectual property, again, sometimes we think in a way nobody, we just think it's ourselves and that's just normal. Uh, I think we downplay who we are and uh, our mindset and the things that are easy to us, but that can be uh, very much intellectual property that can make us money. Um, the big secret that most men won't tell you is amassing cash isn't really about money. It's about feeling like a million dollars every day because you feel like a million bucks. You are far likely to earn a million bucks.
Um, let me go through this a little bit. Uh, cho my choosing um, form. I'm sorry. Let me go back. See where this is going. So she gets into how people um, protest to get ahead or, you know, they're, they're very um, vocal about what they want in, in love and life. And she's, she's speaking of her um, chosen form of protest is making money and use it to create change um, and to what she sees in the world. So I, I can relate to that. I don't know. I'm going to stop right here and see what you guys think. Um, me coming from the background that I come in, I've always been like the defender of the underdog. Uh, and I use my vo voice in usually smaller areas. Um, I never was actually an outright in the streets protest person, but I've always been very strategic on how I wanted to get things done and I would do that and more so behind the scenes. With this, I feel like I am, especially right now, very strategic and, and intentional on having a plan to succeed so I can be, you know, can create change where I want it at. What do y'all think about that? We also need to shift me up. No, let me get that. But yeah, it, it's, it's very intentional about how I want to do things because what I'm seeing now is kind of like, I feel like it's a circle. It's very, um, it's not changing in the speed that things could change. When you have resources behind you, things change a lot quicker. When you have that power, it just changes a lot quicker for me. Um, and she says, demands require capital. And again, I agree with that. Yes, I agree um, that. You have to have, yeah, you have to be intentional because I feel like if you, even if it's not, if, even if you're going to tweak your plan around along the way, you have a plan and you know the end result, that end result, you know, could come with detours before you get there, um, but you still have an end result. To begin to focus on our learning, earning potential and our ability to generate wealth, what works? As I've seen in my, my own life and in lives of women I coach is focusing on our natural skills, talents, and talents, being mindful of how we use our time and prioritize the building of generational wealth because that is how we can make serious change. And if you're not into disseminating the system of oppression, which some of us are, we're like, we got to get this done. <laughs> but um, she said um, that exists in the world today, but why not? We should all be participating in our, our own collective freedom. However, we have the right to build wealth for ourselves as women for no other reason than we want it. We are allowed to make millions uh, and million dollars because we want to fly first class, carry a Chanel bag or a fancy sham, uh, order a fancy champagne, whatever we want. And um, I love, she says, we're allowed to be, in, to be ambitious for ambitious sake, unapologetically. Um, and I love that because we don't necessarily need a, a why in the sense of it has to be some groundbreaking reason. We're allowed to be ambitious for ambitious sake. We're allowed to want for want sake. We're allowed to desire for desire's sake. And I, I think that we need to give ourselves that grace to do so. Yeah, the choice is yours. Exactly. I want it's um, like going on a trip without a map. Yes, the plan is your map. Yes, it really is. The plan is your map. Um, she also goes on to say, some of us want revolution and some of us simply want to be financially secure enough to take our children 
on a beach vacation, pay for college and sleep well at night knowing that our family is cared for. For others, it might be the freedom to live where we want to want and make our own schedules or to be, I'm um, sorry, or to not just have a seat at the table, but own the table. And all of those options are just as worthy. Again, it's so true. And um, another statistic, statistic in um, 2018, only 1.7% of women-owned business made more than a million dollars in revenue. We definitely need to change that. Definitely, definitely, definitely need to change that. So in the, um, the first chapter, it's called Million Dollar Story. Uh, first, forget inspiration. Habit is more dependable. Habit will sustain you whether you're inspired or not. Habit will help you finish and polish your, your stories. Inspiration won't. Habit is persistent in practice. This is by Octavia Butler. What do y'all ladies think about that? I, for one, I think, I absolutely, actually think this is absolutely true. Um, we want, in, sometimes we always want something inspired. I know I'm, I'm at fault for this. I'm like, I need something to inspire me to, you know, do the next thing or take the next step, or I need some inspiration. But if you think about what habit is, habit is like, you know, something that that we just do naturally without even knowing it. And like, um, what am I trying to say? Like, uh, just out of habit, you, you know, you shut the drawers or you like, I don't like drawers open. I shut, shut, shut the drawers shut. What out, out of habit, you're not thinking about it. It's, it's just not, not thinking about it. Habits are important. Yes, they're very important. And people, when they do things out of habit instead of inspiration, they'll get further along. I like that quote, never heard it, but I do like that to, to try to create a habit of doing business and what you, how do you want to, uh, whatever that map is, like what, what Mar uh, Marilyn was saying, um, that plan and create things in that to create a habit that you'll get further instead of having burst of inspirations. I know I need that because I can be very inconsistent about things <laughs> and it's not, it's not good because I'll have a, a very high in my business or even in my, my career path, very high. Then I'm like, I need inspired again. And just instead of keeping a consistent flow where you can get further ahead, what is a habit that you have started to help you grow financially? Me? Um, I have it that I have started. I, of course, I have my accounts um, that I do. I have started, you have well, the, the, the account that is my savings or my checking. I have a certain amount in my, my checking. And once it gets past my benchmark amount, I put that, the rest in savings so I can continue consistently save and not think about it. And once I do that, I don't think about that money. That money is gone to me. Once it hits the savings, I can't take it out. And if I, if I do, I'm like the bank. I charge myself interest. I charge myself interest on that. Me too. Yeah, I need to work on my inconsistencies. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I say I am great at starting things, but... <laughs> Uh, but still learning to complete. Yeah, it's, it's the consistency of it. Like I have so many things that are in like that I've started. Some of you guys know I have my little popcorn business. I ain't, I ain't got nothing on that popcorn except the name and the, the, the domain at this moment. And, <laughs> and I just, I put stuff aside instead of making it my business to do other things with it. Um, also going on what she said, she said, you are living in a financial prison of your own making. Oh, uh, we women are in jail. Our thoughts 
and beliefs about what our work time and energy are worth keep our bank account small and our imposter syndrome large we don't recognize how worthy we are we touched on this um <laughs> I want to do a popcorn party or something. I think I need to do that. I know uh, I, I some of the ladies, I uh, popped some popcorn for. And girl, I don't think I popped some popcorn for nobody since that. <laughs> How many years ago was that? <laughs> um, you can't purchase on the site, but I'm going to put something together that we're. I'm going to be able to do that, um, to purchase the popcorn. That when she talk about we're in a jail, we just was talking about this. We we have created our own prison for whatever reason. Um, it might be even just small things, and some of us are more in prison than the others. Um, and yes, I definitely will tell you today. <laughs> I definitely tell you today. But and then but imposter syndrome. I am bad at this um, in certain areas. So I I always say that I when i'm a i'm very confident i'm a very confident person but there's certain things in my life that i feel like i do have an imposter syndrome for and i i'm trying to work on that because whatever that is it's like i if i got to this point i'm 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 worthy of being at that point is not because I'm trying to, you know, be something that I'm not. I work, I work for that. And I don't care who's in that space. I belong in that space too. I'm still living on that popcorn. Thank you, Rhonda. Yeah, we we need to do a popcorn party, most definitely. Uh, she was like, I remember the moment I decided I wasn't going to, I, wait a minute, I remember the moment I decided I was going to become a millionaire. Do any of you guys have stories? And if you have a, a long story, are you willing to come on and tell me about that? Um, like I said, the link to come on and talk to us is at the beginning of the, the comments for StreamYard. And while y'all decide if you want to do that, I don't know if I had like a time that I can pinpoint in a sense, like this is the very moment that I decided I wanted to be a millionaire. But I remember growing up, like, I feel like my family was middle class. We, um, hold on. I had to get me some tea without slurping. When I tell you I hate <laughs> when I hear slurping. <laughs> so I try to do, I try to be better and do better because I don't like it here. But anyway, I grew up in a middle class um, area when um, my beginning years. The question was, I re um, do you remember the moment you decided that you wanted to become a millionaire or just uh, wealthy or successful? Um, and I was saying that I don't know if I had actually a very pinpointed moment. I feel like I had an experience like again i grew up middle class like early growing up we were i lived on a small farm and we were in like the suburbs country slash area and then as i got older like my mom moved us into the, the suburb suburbs and um we seen you know people that had a lot more than us but i didn't feel like we didn't have anything so i don't think it triggered in my developmental years because i feel like we were comfortable we i didn't we my family made it comfortable for us but when i graduated i moved to atlanta first when i got to atlanta i think i was culture struck like it was a, a culture change for me because you've seen so many okay coach mo when you're not let me connect you just yet. So your device is not connected. But I've seen so many Black people that were wealthy, not just, you know, middle class, upper middle class, any of that. They were wealthy. I went from seeing, you know, your regular cars. Maybe you see your, you know, Mercedes been once in a great while to seeing um, people with Rolls Royces and Bentleys. Okay, I'm gonna connect you. And I I was like, this is beautiful. Like I seen all these people mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. and then 
in the area because I I'm a it's so funny. I always say I love people, but I don't like them. So I don't like to be around, <laughs> around people all the time. But during that time in my life, I was networking a lot. So I was going to mansion parties and I was being invited yeah. to, you know, just because of the company I kept at the time, I was being invited to, you know, you know, box seats somewhere or, you know, private th things. So I was looking like, I wasn't struck by it as in, because that's just not my personality. I don't, I ain't gonna lap up behind nobody. That's just me. That's, I ain't gonna do it. But I was impressed by what they accomplished and I took note of what they accomplished. And I'm looking like, if you can do it, and I'm not saying, well, in some cases, I may be saying it in a negative way. Like if you could do it, I could do it. But in some cases it's like, you, I don't see too much of a difference than persistence and having a goal that made you get this from the difference between me and you. Um, so that, that experience of living in Atlanta, like I lived there, then I went to the army and then I got back out and I went to Ohio for, and then I moved back to Atlanta and I was there for like seven years. That experience of being around people like that, I think it changed me. So I feel like everywhere mm. I go, go, I can make, uh, impact because I seen that I took in that not necessarily hustle. I don't really like that word hustle in a sense because I don't chase money. I try to attract it, but the hustle in working for it, I feel is something different. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. Well, let me look, read uh, Ron is several. Um, this isn't subliminal subliminally, and out uh, outright tells us we can't true do do it, but. We have to make the decision not to be distracted by the noise and focus on grinding towards each goal as we accomplish them. Said a new one. Yes, yes. I, I'm going to add something to that because that is me all the way. I'm, every time I accomplish something, I'm on to the next. I feel like we need to put in there along with that, we need to celebrate ourselves sometimes. Because we can keep on, on to, the, to the next, on to the next, on to the next. And we don't give each other, uh, eat ourselves enough time to be like, girl, you did that. Let me go, you know, go on this little vacation. Or let me go and buy this. I, I've been trying to reward myself in the process because I don't want to be all work and not feel like I'm enjoying life at the same time. Yeah. But go ahead, Mel. Yep, exactly. Thank you so much, Shamali, for having for this platform. It's been and I love I love the I enjoyed reading the book. Um, I've just read a couple of cha chapters. Um, but I think for me, when I realized I wanted to be a millionaire, I don't I won't say I realized I wanted to be a millionaire. But what I did realize was I didn't want anyone else to control my financial future. Mm -hmm. And this was when just prior to me joining the Air Force. Um, I back then I was on AFDC and if anybody mm -hmm. know about AFDC it was the old uh, uh, government assistance, the check. And mm -hmm. back then you, your check came in the mail. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, one particular, this particular uh, time, my check didn't come. Yeah. It didn't come. And my little baby boy, Aaron, mm -hmm. Lord breast his soul. Mm -hmm. I didn't have money to buy Pampers for him because right. my check didn't come. And I had to put a pillowcase on my baby. Uh, and that was so that was just that was heartbreaking for me right but what it made me realize was that Marilyn you can't sit here and allow somebody else to determine your future you gotta right. do this and my check came the next day <laughs> I grabbed my baby got on the city bus and joined the air force that next day wow and wow. I think about had I not done that I don't know where I would be. I don't know yeah. where I would be had I not done that. And yeah. so um, for me, 20, almost 30 years ago was when I realized that I didn't want anyone else to determine my destiny. Mm -hmm. And so now, um, you know, I'm at a place where I want to be a millionaire and I feel mm -hmm. like only I can make that happen. So I've got to put myself in places where millionaires hang out right right and and so this is just such a wonderful platform i'm just so blessed to love to know you mm -hmm. and i'm just so proud of you girl but i just i don't want to take up too much time but for me that was when the light bulb went off that hey girl you got to get up you cannot depend on 
the man right, to, to, right, right. To, to take care of you because he will let you down right you're absolutely right so and, and like uh, i'm i'm happy that we're all coming together because i along with this we're going to go through this book but a part of this is being able to see what tools we all have that can assist each other like what does that look like Hold exactly on like i think nose. that's so important um, because it takes it takes a community of like minded people. Yeah. Um, my business coach, she calls it your personal VIP or your personal board of directors. Right. And you have to make sure yeah. that you aren't the smartest person on your board. Right. Because if you're the smartest person on your board, then guess what, sister? You got a problem. You got a problem. I, I say that all the time. <laughs> Even with <laughs> me being in management, mm -hmm. um, I, of course, you got upper management, got lower management, whatever it is. And I always, you know, assess my team and see how we can capitalize off of their everybody's strengths. Exactly. I'm strong at everything. Exactly. And I don't want to be. Exactly. I honestly, some things I don't want to do. Exactly. Um, and if you're not capitalizing off of the resources around you, what are you doing? You're, you're first of all, you're wearing yourself thin. Exactly. And, and you're not, you're, you're not, that pace that you're setting is not going to sustain. You're it's, gonna, you, it's, it's not, it's just not going to sustain. You're not exactly. going to do what you need to do. So just, I say, I, I always, especially in Atlanta, go back to my Atlanta. I mm -hmm. used to say we do powwows and uh -huh. I was my group of friends together. So I had people, you know, IT, some people, just random group, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, software engineers, people that are, you know, homemakers, some people that did interior design, some people, you know, that did film and music. It was a random group of people, but we used to get together and, I, and we would see like, what is your next project? What's going on with you? Okay, so this is going on. What what is the deficit in now? Or what's going on that you don't feel like you can get this done by your timeline or whatever? And how can the people in this group assess you? I mean, assist you with that? And I, I have I need to start that back up actually. Well, girl, let me know whatever I can do to support you. <laughs> I am there, so just let me know whatever I can do to support you. Because I that, think you're right. That was beneficial because first of all, you're seeing what tools are around you. Exactly. And then everybody's going to need help at some point. So if you need, if they can see what's around them, be like, okay, so-and-so does this, so-and-so does this. Can we reach out to so-and-so? You know the the net, the tools that are around you to sustain, um, to get you to the next la level. And all of us have that. So it's like each one teach one, each one help one kind of thing. <laughs> yep, exactly. And, um, when you and when you think about it, that's what a lot of Koreans do and farmers mm -hmm. do. They will all live in one house, 111 of them. In <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and they will help that brother or that sister get her hair, her hair store together. Right. right. That we patronize. And then right. once they get their hair store together, they say, okay, we helped you. Now you help this one. And that's what they right. do. You know. Right. I think, I think Let me fix up my too. nose ring. I feel like. I'm up here rubbing my nose, thinking it's a boogie, and it's my <laughs> nose ring. <laughs> I'm like, so I got a boogie in my oh, nose. Girl, 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 now you know I wouldn't let you look. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be I, I say, let me put this phone on, uh, turn this mic off, and text her real quick, and let her know she got some company inside her nose. Let me just I wouldn't even my, do that. I wouldn't let you do that, girl. I'm just like, oh, what no, is sis, hanging you... out my nose? And I forgot it was a nose. <laughs> Girl, give me just one sec. Girl, no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't even let you do that, girl. I would have to, I would, I would get you together. Nope. <laughs> well, yeah, this is this is this is exciting, guys. Please share out the broadcast. Let's help support our sister Shamila. She is doing amazing things. So please share, share, share. Um, comment. Um, please ask your questions. Please share, share, share. Um, let's really help this sister with this platform, please. All right. All right. So there you go. Are you good now, girl? Did you take it out? 
<laughs> no, it's still in there, but okay. Like, mm, what is? <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't see nothing. So you look fine. I think I missed one of Rhonda's comments. Okay, you, yeah, she gave a comment about being a million. I decided I wanted to be a millionaire as a single mom living in a failed marriage with a um, background issue. No matter what we challenge, we can do it. That is definitely the truth. Yep. There's so much we need to give ourselves credit. Yep. And I always give my the women in my family, and this is of course this book is of focus and geared towards women in marginalized yep. communities. But think about thinking about especially my mom's side. Those are some strong women. women. Mm -hmm. Strong women. I like I don't ever remember them complaining about what they had to do. They just got it done. And I, I tell my mom all the time, I was like, I'm glad that I had that example because nothing in my life seems impossible. It's just about putting the plan together and doing it. Exactly. She, she was like that. Now, it's so funny as she gets older, she'd be saying stuff. And I'm like, like that ain't the woman I know. But <laughs> <laughs> that ain't the woman I know. But um, I mean, she's I mean, she's in her 70s, though. But mm. I don't remember ever having like, you can't do that mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. of this, or you need a man to do that, or you need somebody to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, it's like relationships are beautiful, absolutely, but sometimes you're not in that. So, like I say with my friends right now, you know what? I got to build for myself, you yep. know? And then when that mm -hmm. person comes on, we can build together. Together, yeah, exactly. Now, I'm not going to stay stagnated. Because exactly. I don't have nobody to help and assist, mm -hmm. I got to build for myself. Exactly. And that's what I'm doing. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's really important that you, you do. I mean, because at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you know, those days of a man pro being the provider and we just stay home pregnant. No. <laughs> no. Exactly. No, and he no. gets into no, no, that no. because. The, the second chapter, I'm going to wait till I get to that second chapter to get mm -hmm. into it, but she gets an in-depth about centuries of how women have been literally almost like property. We weren't allowed to do nothing with exactly. our men. That's right. For the, almost up until the last 50 years, I think. That's right. That's so right. That, think about that mm -hmm. and then think about where we are now. Exactly. So, um, yes, most definitely. You can stay on if you want to. I'm going to get into the uh, okay uh, the second part if you, uh, of not the second part. This is chapter uh, one. Mm -hmm. um, she tells about stories um, after that statement of I remember the moment I decided I was going to be a millionaire. She talks about stories in her upbringing where mm -hmm. she saw relatives or people that she was close to, um, and they were successful. She don't know how successful they were, but mm -hmm. it made a mark on her that mm -hmm. they were successful. They had, you know, certain food in the refrigerator that she yep. didn't have, the mm -hmm. snacks, you know, or <laughs> you know, pulling the bag, whatever that was, especially in the child's mind. If you don't have yep. something, you go, you be like, oh, they got the nachos over there. <laughs> like, it can be something so little, but if you uh -huh. don't have that at home, yep. That's, yep. so, that's so big to you. So mm -hmm. um, she was talking about situations like that. Was there a, ever a relative or a person that you've seen and, and you're like, wow, like, oh, they God, yeah, here or they dress a certain way mm -hmm. or they look a certain way. And it just made you think, like, I want to be like that. Yeah. I, yeah. Actually, it is. Um, I can remember growing up and I had a little friend. Her name was Tasha. And and her mom actually worked for Lockheed Martin, okay. which made the, the shuttle par parts for the shuttle. I'm from Florida. Mm -hmm. And her mom drove this nice Camaro. Man, it was so nice. <laughs> and I love, and we were poor. We, I mean, we got food stamps. And um, I remember, I used to love to go to her house to play. Yeah. She, she had Totino's pieces. <laughs> I see. Right? <laughs> and she always had the nicest clothes. Their house was so nice. Yeah. You know, we lived in the ghetto and they and her parents owned their house. Yeah. And so I, you know, so I always loved going over there. And for me, I was like, man, I want to be like Miss Nisi. You right. know, I want to drive a Camaro and I want to have all of this money and stuff. And so, yeah, 
I can remember that. Yeah. I don't remember, like, not to that level. I was, I actually was talking to one of my girlfriends Mm -hmm. yesterday. She um, is a Navy vet. Mm -hmm. And I was asking her the same question. I was like, I don't, because my family more was a working, like, really working class family. Uh So they have the extreme. We were, we were good. But Mm -hmm. uh, as far as my dad, he worked for a division of Packard, uh, no, he worked for a division of General Motors. Uh-huh. So it was, uh, it's called Packard Electric. So mm-hmm. he had that job for, until he retired. When I was born, he had it and he retired with that. Mm-hmm. My mom, the same thing. She had, uh, she worked for General Electric. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I was born, she had the job and she retired with the job. Mm-hmm. So they, as middle-class people, they did well. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I never seen the upper upper echelon, mm-hmm. like I said, till I got to Georgia. Yeah, a, but I do mm-hmm. remember, you know, remembering like being around. I, I knew I would always wanted to hold a status of being educated to know what I'm talking about. And that came from my aunt, my mom's baby sister. Mm-hmm. So when I was younger, she uh would um, come and get us and take mm-hmm. us up to the college with her. Mm-hmm. And she had a um a apartment outside of college with her boyfriend that she got married to and still married to today. And my oh my gosh. Married, uh-huh. I don't know, 30 something years. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I just remember like, I always wanted to be, you know, educated, know what I'm talking about, be yep. able to speak for myself. Mm-hmm. And I, I credit that to her, but I can't, I can't pinpoint cer- a, a certain person, but my mm-hmm. whole Atlanta experience of who I was around and what I seen. And, you know, like I said, pa- being at mansion parties and you're like, it, like I said, again, not knocking the person, but you'll see, sometimes you'll see people and they have this beautiful lifestyle and mm-hmm. you're like, I can do that too. I want that. Yeah, exactly. I, what can I do to, to get that? Yeah. That's what yeah and, and the thing is, it's like, they're not, they're not just, you know, they're not like rockets. They ain't built, you know, you know, Bill Gates or somebody, or yeah, or satellite or something like that. It wasn't so far fetched. Uh huh. So what they were doing, it's like, I, I can do that. Yeah, I can yeah. Do that too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I actually can. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think it was the whole experience, not necessarily a person, that made me think on that highlight. Like, I can mm-hmm. actually do this, mm-hmm. I, and I will. Yeah. <laughs> so, we, we're time. gonna do it together. Yes, together, girl. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, does anybody else think of anything? Of um, I'm gonna look through this. Um, the comments. She talked talk about a lot. She was talking about she had uh, she's biracial. She had an aunt on one side mm-hmm. that was you know the black aunt, and she had her stuff together. She she kept a tight shift at her house, <laughs> but she was she had her stuff. She she her and her husband. I can't remember what was she saying about what was the auntie's Let name. Let me look in here and see because I had, I was reading it as well. It was Auntie Shelley. She was on the black side and she was just talking about um, they lived in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and she drove a Jaguar. So that was her thing. She oh, wow. Was, yeah. She had her Jaguar. They had a formal dining room. They had a big backyard, you know. So she was seeing that from her, that aunt. And then she had the other auntie on the white side that, you know, she had her stuff together too. She, she would, um, but she would always send her stuff and send her money, like mm-hmm. for a verb, to always took care of her. So she was like, it was her aunt. And then she had a friend too. She had mm-hmm. a friend that, um, a little Jewish girl, she said. And those are the ones that had the good snacks, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so that was they Tasha. <laughs> what you say? I said, that was they Tasha. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but those snacks will get you as a kid. Girl, <laughs> yes. I'd be like, oh, yeah, they got the real Twizzlers. Hey, girl, what you doing? You know, because our stamps had done ran out for the month. So we didn't have nothing to eat. <laughs> you know, maybe some government cheese. <laughs> So no, I went over there. She had good snacks and Totinos and all of that stuff. She would kill me if she heard me saying that. Right. <laughs> Girl, I'm telling you that it as a kid. It really yep. does. <laughs> oh, but yeah, her she gets into her like her mom and dad actually did well for a little while, she was saying. Mm-hmm. And then I, I guess her mom was 
and then her their parents were doing both doing very well mm -hmm. and something happened at her mom's work her, her mom didn't even want to work no more and since her father had a good job the mom quit and then something happened with her father's job so uh -huh. it was just a downward spiral and it just kept on spiraling out of control and then her father ended up passing away and her mother you know with the 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 grief of his death just kept on going down so she was like i don't want this for myself basically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we get that we i mean there's stories like it's it happens like my situation wasn't a death it was a divorce you know mm -hmm, parents mm -hmm. get divorced even though like i said w with them divorced my mom i i still have to credit her for doing a really good job you mm -hmm, know she mm -hmm. she did do her thing as again the women will make it happen that we yeah, by hook or crook Right. <laughs> we gonna make it happen. That's why I, you know, I and I it, it, it's crazy because I think if more of us would take advantage of the opportunities that are afforded to us, we right. would be millionaires. Yes. Because I mean, I tell I tell our, our founder this all the time with Divas and Dog Tags. I say the black woman right now is the new shiny baby. Sure is. We re we we because yeah. I mean you know we have the resilience, the passion, the uh, mindset to do great and wonderful things. Mm -hmm. We just need an opportunity. We just need an opportunity. Well, that that's the knowledge thing out there, mm -hmm. and 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 I I try to. That's the exactly the reason why I try to network because yeah. same here. You don't know what you don't know exactly, right. and you don't. And 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 my thing is also is you know. There's enough out there for all of us. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I, I can't do or I don't want to do, millionaires delegate stuff yes. and outsource. Yeah. And millionaires collaborate. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. You know, they, they really do. And so that, that's kind of my thought process, too, is, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, what I don't know, let me find someone who does know. Exactly. We do. We need to do that. We need to do that. And like I said, we're going to talk about some things um, as yes. we go on is about what we can. Like, we don't just want to read this book and then be like, oh, that was good, girl. And not, you know, make some action steps. Correct. Put things together to, you know, you know, keep that, keep this flowing. This exactly. Is, this needs to continue to flow. Exactly. Um, so it says, let's create a new money story. This gets into mindset. And she said, before we can start to build wealth, well, we have to heal our relationship with money. Yes. And this is a quote from Oprah. She said, create the highest, grandest version possible of your life because you become what you believe. I Ooh. truly believe that. That is so true. I put, I, I try to put steps um, or goals for myself at the beginning of the year. Sometimes usually not even necessarily beginning of the year sometimes my birthday is my benchmark for me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and i put like okay how much do you want to make this year and what what can you do to make that happen mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the or just goals like mm -hmm. you guys know i bought a house that was a goal and mm -hmm. like i said it wasn't like this unreachable goal because i see my parents buy homes Exactly. But it was like, and that's like I said, I feel like just because, because that's an unreachable goal for other people. That's because right. Of their mindset and when your it mindset. doesn't have to be. That's exactly right. It doesn't right. have to be. I, I didn't think it was unreachable because I've seen it. And I've seen exactly. it with a single mother do it on mm -hmm. her own. Mm -hmm. So um, I just needed to know what are the steps. Again, exactly. the information. What are the steps? What do I need? What does my credit score need to be like? Exactly. How much do I need to, you know, put down? What are the, you know, the uh, the tools that I have? I'm a veteran. Do I have my VA loan? What does that look like? How do I get the stuff in order for that? That that stuff where mm -hmm. everybody, those are the resources, and you have to reach out for that and um and just keep on. Like me, it's always okay. Like Rhonda said in the chat. You once you set a goal and you reach, okay, so what's the, I got the house. Okay, I now what house. next? You gotta always be um challenging yourself to do something more. Exactly. You got the house now. Okay, what now? What next? Exactly. What next? And that's I'm still it's so funny because I thought about, you know, maybe written out certain things, and I'm looking like my little anti-social stuff. Oh, nobody in this house. <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe I still need to look into because I have a whole loft upstairs. Child, we'll see about that. Yeah, so, right. Because I mean, at the end of the day, it's your space. Yeah. And that's the great thing is your choice. So if you exactly. choose, you know what? 
I don't want to rent it out. It's your choice, you know. <laughs> and that's that's the great thing. But girl, yeah, mm, I don't know me that because I mean, some days I don't feel like me. I mean, people think, oh, Marilyn's so sweet and nice. Right. Now, some days she don't want to be bothered. You don't want you don't want to be bothered, and you want and to I just want to be you know, I, you know, yeah. I think looking crazy. Exactly. Around. <laughs> you totally draws on with the and, and shirt hair and all in a man. Man. If I want yeah. to walk around looking like that, I don't want nobody in here looking at me. Exactly. I don't, my, my thing is, if I want to have a day where I don't put on any clothes and ha sleep in my PJs all day, I won't be able to do that. Right. But you can't do that when you have company. Right. Right. Right, so, child. Mm -hmm. Girl. You have to think about that. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm really enjoying this book, though. I'm so excited. Me I mean, too. It's I really, really, really good. And it's, it's I think that the thing is all about mindset. I think about and I hadn't read all of the, the up to chapter two. But the thing that really stuck out to me is how she went shopping with her friends, oh, and she, yeah. had to, she had she was she had to come with some roll thirty three dollars in rolled up coins right. to go shopping, right. and she was smart enough to wait until they left out yeah. to get a wallet, girl. Right. And as a teenager, not you know not get I'm trying to get my camera to do right. Um, and my thing is, she didn't get some materialistic thing like a purse right. or a pair of shoes right. or something that a teenage girl could wear. Yeah. She got a wallet. Right. Even that's, though she I had no folding story. money, as Rhonda says, to put in the wallet. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. And, so it, and so that really resonated with me because, again, it's about mindset. It's so I think I, I remember having a story similar to that. Really? Um, I was in uh, high school. Uh-huh. Yeah, girl, I did everything in high school. But uh, like I said, when my mom it was four of us, my but my oldest brother was gone. He was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So because we're 10 years apart, I'm the baby. Uh-huh. So he was already gone. So it was my sister, um, my, my other brother, and myself. Mm -hmm. But um my sister might have been gone at that point too, because she she's seven years older than me. Regardless, I was always in everything. I was in dance. I cheered. I was in a band, like just everything. So because yeah, you was the baby, so you got to do. That's like my sister. <laughs> you got to do every doggone thing. I didn't get to do nothing. <laughs> that thing still could do whatever the heck she wanted. My, mother, <laughs> my sweet me. baby. All right. Anyway, that's your story. I'm, I'm having a moment right now. <laughs> but it was true. I was I was in a lot, but my mom again with her personality taught mm -hmm. us the budget because she was like, "Well, I ain't, I ain't got enough for all y'all to do everything. Mm -hmm. So, but you do get you know the child support money coming in, and I'm gonna give it to you. Oh, but wow. you gotta budget it. That's what she told us. She would. It, she didn't take nothing out of it. Mm -hmm. She would divide it between me. Yeah, it was just me and my brother next to me because the youngest two are closer in age. Me and my brother a little over a year apart, but he I got passed. You. He's in the okay. but we were, mm -hmm. and so it was just us and how. But she would give us the child support. She, well, divide it. She was like, after this is gone, don't ask me for nothing. So mm -hmm. we had the budget, mm -hmm. and um, but we had the budget between stuff that for real. Like if I wanted to be in dance. That was a part of my dance and uh, class of money. Mm -hmm. Or if I wanted to have this extra clothes, that was part of my clothes money. It mm -hmm. was whatever I wanted. But that year, I was like I said, I was in band, and our band got chosen to go to Disney World mm -hmm. to do the Disney parade. Mm -hmm. At that time, also, I was supposed to be going to prom with my little boyfriend or whatever, whatever. I <laughs> <laughs> it was all, all around the same time. Mm -hmm. So I I had to go to Disney World and I don't even know if I had $50 in my pocket. If it oh, might wow. have been that. Uh -huh. um, and I remember that because I had to budget out. Like my friends were buying all this stuff and I'm mm -hmm. like, and I had to think about, I was just thinking about that. I was like, wow, but by my little boyfriend, his little goofy head, you know, because you know, yeah. he had with the ears, he wanted a goofy head. I ain't had no money, but I bought a darn goofy head and I still bought it. But Girl, anyway. see, and that's what we do as women. We ain't got no money, but we buying this joker Nikes and Jordans and all of this kind of stuff. Making him drive our car while we drop us off at work and he roll around in our in our car. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you ain't had no money. I don't 
think it was. Yeah, no money. You buy him a good. It wasn't m- much money though. Girl, what did he buy you? What'd you say? What did he buy you? Not he, because we went to different schools. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, we went to different schools, and um, he was senior, I was a junior at the time. Uh huh. And um, but I do remember buying him that freaking goofy head, and I ain't had that much money. Yeah, I don't see? even remember what I bought myself. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> But anyway, but, I digress. Yeah, <laughs> I think about that we're, freaking we're natural yes. givers, though. We we really we, are nat- natural givers. Yeah, and nurturers. Yeah. So definitely, <laughs> definitely. So what was that? Okay, so um, it was the Oprah quote? Um, the money story that shaped you. Um, you, you may be keeping you broke. That is very true. Mm-hmm. Like um. Not telling my family, but you all of us have those family pe- uh, members that are like, oh, I'm not good with money. What makes you think say that? Like, um, because it is a learned trait. Being good with money is a learned trait. It's not like you pop out of the womb and be like, oh goodness, I'm just, this, you know, I can't do nothing with money. Mm-hmm. It's a learned trait or whatever that is. You because my dad, my dad is a prime example of not being good with money. So my mom would take care of it now. I mean, he's been married over. Shoot, 30 something years to the wife he has now. Mm-hmm. And the women always took care of the business because mm-hmm. he just wasn't good with it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. again, that's a learned trait. You can learn yep. if you want to. Exactly. But exactly. you got to want to know, know how to do that. Exactly. She has one in here. She says that she hears from um, a lot of her clients. They said, uh, money's not important to me. And I hear that from, like, it's so, my mom will say something. Shoot, money going to tri- have you acting like that? I don't need no money. I just, you know, keep my little, I'm like, okay, just, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> especially our old, older folks, they'll, just, mm-hmm. they'll be saying stuff. You'd be like, but if you got it. Well, yeah, you, you know, and and sometimes we I get like you don't want you don't want the money if it has strings attached or okay. you don't want the money if it's going to cause you to work so hard that you don't have, you know, mm-hmm. a quality life. I get that portion of it. But mm-hmm. money in itself, like it's the truth. Money in itself is not good or bad. It's who who, who is operating it. Exactly. And, and it's a tool pain and all of that. So it's not about. And a lot of that is that you got to guard yourself. Like I told everybody can't come in my space. Everybody can't be around me. You got to vet people out. And you got to see people that are just only sticking around for one thing. You get, you vet them out. And I'm good at it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yep. No. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. Nope. Oh, yes. Same Do you, here. Have you had anybody like ever tell you stuff like that? Like, um, um, money's not just important to me. And what do you think about that? Uh, you know what? When I hear someone say that money's not important to me, um, I kind of take it to either, to me, it means one of two things. Either it truly is not something, I, I, I'm not something to them and I watch because my thing is I hear what you say, but I watch what you do. And right. for me, when someone says money is not important to me, I really watch how they move around. Mm-hmm. I watch and I see, are they, are they a giver? Are they, what are they doing in their community? Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then I kind of make a decision from there because like I said, it's, it's two, one of two things, either they true money truly doesn't mean anything. And they're n- usually natural givers mm-hmm. or they ain't got no money. <laughs> right. And I think there's, a, we need to differentiate money versus materialism. You can right. be materialistic and be broke. You and that's us. Yeah. And, and that's us because you think about I remember when I was in the Air Force and I would I would watch colonels in the in the cafeteria line. Mm-hmm. And I'm in the line, I'm just the E4. Yeah. Colonels. Girl, I'm buying up everything. <laughs> they getting the bowl of soup and fussing <laughs> about the price. Right. <laughs> It's so true. I think there is a difference between being materialistic and having money. I like, I always say I like nice things, Mm -hmm. but I don't think I'm materialistic. I I like quality things, but I can have some $2 drawers in there or some whatever. Or if I really want something, I'll get it. But like this little, like little stuff that I, 
it sometimes I make it look more expensive than it is, but I don't have to have name brand stuff. But if I like it, I'll buy it. Exactly. But I don't I don't do it to impress anybody. Because exactly. I can buy, like I said, buy stuff at you know Target, and I can I got some red bottoms in there because mm-hmm. I wanted some red bottoms for my power suits when I have to go to a meeting. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> so, exactly. So it does it doesn't matter in that sense to me. But what does matter is that I have enough to do what I want to do when I want to do exactly. It. And that's and I that's, feel like that's a diff- I think motive is the difference. That's exactly it. I remember I think it was Lynn Richardson. She said uh black people wear their wealth on their backs mm, they do. as opposed to those other folks they they have it in their assets right exactly and i think that's we have to shift the narrative when it comes to our people and help them to understand that you know we have to um stop wearing our wealth on our backs mm-hmm. you know and start investing you know yes. like this this tax refund everybody getting ready to get instead of going and buying jordans and nikes and you know and spending it up why not invest that money right yeah you're absolutely right right why why not you know open that business that you have always wanted to do mm-hmm. why not start that business why you know because my thing is and you think about most most rich people with their fa- with the, they do they practice generational wealth they're building for their their children's 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 right. children to live right mm-hmm. as opposed to us a lot mm-hmm. of times hell we just trying to pay to get the the rent paid for this, for this month mm-hmm. not even next month right, right. living for the moment it's exactly so, so i love this book because it really helps it has helped me to change my mindset mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know um i know for my husband he hates eating out yeah yeah you know, but for me, I like eating out. But what I'm <laughs> but what I'm learning is you're gonna pay either on the front end and and high in health health conditions, oh, yeah, or on the back end and and um or you can either pay on the front end with no money buying this fast food or on the back end and medications, mm-hmm. doctors' visits, and all of these kinds of things. Right, exactly. You know, so exactly, it, it's all about mindset. Um, changing your mindset and your perspective yeah you know it's it's a lot of switch especially in our community as a whole because of course we have the people that like always say i have my strengths and i have my weaknesses Mm -hmm. like some some things that might not be a weakness to me but this over in this area yeah like what do i spend money on that's just frivolous i'm trying to think that one thing that's just super frivolous i try not to get in habits though that. Mine is fast food. Fast food. That's I'm, mine. What is yours? I'm trying to think because when, especially when I travel for work, mm-hmm. I will get mad at myself because I eat out. And I, I think mine is a little different because I eat out, but since I have so many, I don't know if it's food intolerances, I'm like, Mm-mm, I got to get back to cooking for myself. And it because if I'll break out, start itching, something just happens. I'm trying to think, what is my, I don't, I think it changes up. I'll, I get into little spurts of stuff. Like um, I do like um, sometimes my teas or I don't, I don't drink coffee that much, but I do do have a, a cup that is at star, uh, well, uh, order that stop right i get a caramel macchiato with coconut milk and um i'm trying to think it's funny because i know if i go in one of these covers i'll probably figure it out <laughs> <laughs> and see that's the difference between me and you i i in that covers you won't be able to tell but in that car with all the mcdonald's and popeyes and churches and this and that you'll be able to tell Right. <laughs> oh goodness, that's funny. And it's, and it's crazy because um a lot of the banking, I know I'm with Chase, and it will if people would just I think one of my girlfriends was saying that if you write down your if you write it down, especially when it comes to your money, for me, a lot of times I don't track my money hmm. until I go back and look at that Chase app and it has that pie circle with how much money <laughs> I've spent. And then that's when it's the wake up call for me. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I, my thing is, I just would encourage our people, especially our ladies, to start tracking your spending. Yeah, that's a that's a good idea. I need to do, but but like I'm, I'm really frugal to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I have my things that I absolutely want, but I got into a habit early mm-hmm. that I reward myself, uh-huh. like and especially. In the process, well, it was before that because I was trying to reach on something, mm-hmm. reach the goal, but I wouldn't allow myself to buy certain stuff. Really? I, not that I would track my money, but my way of eliminating unnecessary spending, especially with clothes or whatever. And I'm not really a clothes. It's funny, I'm really not a clothes person. I hate going shopping, to be honest. Really? Mm hmm. It's so much like. It, my friends that are in the Dallas area, they laugh at me because they, they were like, we want to go shopping. I'm like, okay, when are we going to eat, though? <laughs> like, like, they're like, well, see, that would be me. I don't like shopping, but I want to go eat. It's so funny because they were like, okay, if you go with the shop, we can go out to dinner. I'm like, hey, okay. <laughs> All right, got you. <laughs> so it's, I, I, I put it in me, like, whatever that thing was. And I tell my niece, I was my my nieces and nephews make goals for yourself and then don't allow yourself to do certain things until you reach that and just in little stuff like i was like okay i wanted to get a car or pay off a car i couldn't do anything to before like actually my my red bottoms was a reward for paying off my car or something like that like Mm -hmm. i won't allow myself especially bigger purchases that are just frivolous pur- purchases actually it really is if you think about it mm-hmm. if it's a bigger purchase that's a luxury purchase and i really don't need it i can't do that thing until i pay off a big bill I how do you remain disciplined how do you how do you remain disciplined to do that though that's the question that's- I, i'm not disciplined like i said i'm i'm great at starting stuff i can start <laughs> stuff baby but I how do you remain disciplined? I think it honestly came going back to that about my mom. She really? made us budget okay. at an early age. So I don't feel like I have a problem with budgeting. I feel like more of my problems are with knowledge and how to get there and procrastination. I got you. It like because I had to do it at such an early age. Age, I got you. Um, and she just ingrained that in me. I remember watching her. She was the one that was good about budgeting. She would every Saturday go down into the basement. She had the TV on. She had her, all of her bills. She had her checkbook. She would balance her checkbook every Saturday. Really, and then write out her bills and mail them in. Like she. I watched her do that. So she was like, no, nah, I don't do that. I don't. <laughs> I, I watch it like on it. And that's probably more accurate just in case something's missing. But mm-hmm. I don't do that. Like she did that. She was very meticulous down to the, the penny. Oh, like wow. there's a penny missing. Oh, well, there's a problem. Like who took that penny? <laughs> like, and they charged me something. Like, she was that bad. And I'm not exaggerating. She wow. was that meticulous. So I watched her. And then, like I said, when she when it came to child support it she didn't take none of our child support she mm-hmm. gave it to us and be like you got to budget this for the month if you spend this that's all you got so i took that into adulthood so i don't think i have that problem because it was so ingrained in me early mm-hmm. more of my problem is having access to information mm-hmm. i feel mm-hmm. like i don't know we all of us we don't know what we don't no, exactly. And we don't know what to ask if we don't know what to ask. So exactly. it's about be, getting ourselves around people and putting ourselves in the right circle with the right information, so we can get this information. Exactly, exactly. I think you know, and, and I think that's why it's so important. That, you know, if you want to be a millionaire, you mm-hmm. got to hang around millionaires. Mm-hmm. And so that may mean spending. You know, instead of spending a hundred dollars on some shoes or two hundred dollars on some right. shoes, spend spend, spend that two hundred dollars on a seminar yeah with Mm -hmm. with millionaires you know um you know because i really like i said i really believe that you know you have you you be you become who you come you become who you hang around and Mm -hmm. so it's like if you want to be a millionaire you've got to get in those circles you got to read what they read you do um totally because i because i i think about i think i i think about um generational curses and oh, I think about with my own mother, I love her to death. 
but she raised us on welfare. Mm -hmm. And I found myself on welfare. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it wasn't until my check didn't come <laughs> right. that I woke up. But I think about but I think about what other what other women that are still in that cycle. And it's like you they don't know what they don't know. Cause my exactly. Dad, and I didn't know. Yeah. My dad's side was a little different. I don't I don't even to be honest, I don't even remember because uh, my dad, it's I mean, he has his two sisters and it's him. Well, that's from his mom. My grandpa was a trip, so he has sections. <laughs> Oh, that was Papa a Rolling Stone girl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so funny. Let me get this picture. But he was, he was a, he was a good looking girl. Yeah, I know he was. I didn't meet him until I, I was grown, like in my twenties. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I got. Hold on, let me get this. Okay, one. okay. <laughs> Guys, please share, share, share the broadcast. Please share, share, share. Um, invite someone. Please comment. Um, ask Shamali any questions you may have. Um, let us know what you're thinking of the broadcast. Please share um, and comment. Girl, I'm share, share, share. I'm promoting. Share, share, share. share. Comment, y'all. Anybody? Any? Oh, girl, yes. He looked like Billy D. Williams. <laughs> girl, <laughs> girl, I'm okay, nah, girl, what poppin'? Let me stop. Oh, that's right. I'm married. Let me sit my. Let me shut my ass up. Sorry. See, my grandpa was a man. <laughs> he had sections. Oh, um, he had sections. You say? <laughs> my dad didn't know all his siblings. Girl, no. Wow. So, um, but with that, or, or put it this way, with. Because his side, which is a different story, and we're going to get back to this, but his side, to be honest, they were successful. Mm -hmm. But my dad wasn't attached to them. He didn't grow up around them. We really? have, this, my last name is Green, supposed to be with the E, but it's not. Like, mm -hmm. they didn't put it on my birth certificate. Mm -hmm. But we're from um, Burnt Corn, Alabama. So mm -hmm. we have churches named after our family, because we owned them. There's... Mm -hmm. um, Cemetery named after our friend because we owned it. There's a whole lot of land. There was, they did timber or something like that. So it was acres, like 300 acres of land that they did some business. Like that side was actually successful. Mm -hmm. I don't know nothing about them really, mm -hmm. except for you know, a few cousins that I picked up along the way that I got to know. But we didn't know that. So just imagine the information that yes that y'all could have gathered to them yes they like think about this this man i don't know when this was taken but since my dad is 78 look at that suit yes think about that mm -hmm. i was i was really thinking about i was like how he was dressed and his father i got a picture of him too let me get that and mm -hmm. i'm gonna get back to the book but i was thinking about that in the sense of lost information mm -hmm. or lost inheritance mm -hmm. and you don't know what they that information i think inheritance is information as well it is you can give people stuff that they can take so it's not like you're starting from the beginning exactly so, um, yeah that's very true that's very true and and that just goes to where i was talking about how um with other cultures they really share the knowledge with their people and they really build um, a financial, a financial. Um, they build a financial foundation for generations, as opposed yeah. to with us, we don't do that. You know, you know, no. you, you have a you have a grandfather over there that that his family owns land and cemeteries and churches. And mm -hmm. can you imagine the kind of information that he could? That's what I'm saying. The show? information that we lost. So yeah, this mm -hmm. is my grandfather. Uh huh. This was his father. And look again, they look at the suit. Yep, yep. See, so you know he had money. Look at that suit. That is exactly. nice. Exactly. And then this was his father. Look at this. Oh wow. See? Wow, wow, wow. So they they had resources. They had resources, yeah. And they you had they information. Mm -hmm. We just did we lost that when my <laughs> my grand grand, she wasn't playing. She was like, no. <laughs> You got all the other women, you can go ahead. Me and my baby's gonna be all right. She was a trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she was like, oh, we, I'm not having it. Get I'm not her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm that, yeah exactly. To you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -mm. I'm so, not in the sharing business. No. Right. 
I'm not in polygamy and know about it, okay? Right. Yeah, this is, this is not an amorous kind of relationship. Right. Yeah, it's okay for you to be with Sally Sue tonight <laughs> and Jackie Jean tomorrow and me tonight. Not so. No. She, she uh -huh. was having it. You know. But again, sadly, mm -hmm. and I get why. Um, I mean, yeah, especially as a woman, I get exactly. That. But we lost information. Mm -hmm. We lost we lost that whatever that was because mm -hmm. i totally don't know i know mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. i know that there there's land still there and, mm -hmm. and business is still there that's owned by you know the descendants of you know the green family mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i don't know that information mm -hmm. I, like i said i wouldn't even want access to that necessarily but the knowledge that's why i'm talking about the knowledge because you can build on knowledge and so. and not, and I know I, I used to tell my kids this all the time. Knowledge is power. <laughs> I'm uh -oh. sorry, Rhonda was like, okay, come through, male model grandpa. <laughs> 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 he's a man, and he was a mess. He was he's a mess. Girl, Too wow, wow, wow! I am I mean, really enjoying this. So let me get to this quote. I says, um, mm -hmm. I don't know who's this Christian. Uh, Larson, don't I didn't look up who that was. This is believe thoroughly in your greater interior self. Know that you have something within you that is greater than the obstacle. I feel like, again, our parents are perfect, but my mom, I feel like even without her knowing it, she did that for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I tell my story, even how I got into the military, I had surgery, you know, I had back surgery, I had a few spine, had steel rods on my back. I went into the military in that condition. Girl, get what? Yeah, I went wow. into a waiver, but I didn't think it was an issue because mm -hmm. of my mom. Mm -hmm. And that continued that attitude that she instilled in me like, okay, is over what's next kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You you don't have a discipline. You don't have any. If you don't think you have it, you don't. Exactly. And, um, I, that carried on into you know my life as you know an adult and to my life as um, accomplishing goals. It's like I don't feel like I have any obstacles unless I make it one. Exactly. Now, and there might be something there, mm -hmm. but there's always a workaround. Exactly. I just exactly. need to acknowledge what that is, dissect it, and see how I can get around it. Get around it again. Going again, mindset, and it's so important. I think um, how our mother, our parents lay those foundations. Because yeah, although we we were poor, my mother, same thing. She would always tell us, "You could do anything in this world you want to do." And it's true. anything, and it's true. It's it very very true. true. And the, the other thing she would always tell me is, "Don't be like me. Be better than me." Yeah. And I never understood that. Yeah. Until I got older, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I when my check that. didn't come. I can't hit, keep bringing up this check not showing up. But y'all don't understand what that did to my life. But I always <laughs> say it's stories like that or instances like that are for our greater good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We might think it it because it is at that moment. It is. Yeah. It is a, a tragic. It is something that we need to overcome but in that moment was a catalyst moment for us that's and, right and that allowed us to become greater people exactly exactly um uh, like can somebody watching the stream send a donation to continue to make this amazing oh i don't even know <laughs> I know you got a cash app or something. I do have a cash app. Oh, girl, put your cash app in there. Let, thank you for the blessings. Thank you for blessing thank my you. sister. Bless I my sister. sister. I sister put your cash app in there, girl. Girl, let me know my cash app. That's yeah, okay. Let me look it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm your sister's keeper, honey. I appreciate it. While you're doing it, I'm going to look up, uh, I mean, start reading the rest of this. It says, okay. um, oh, I think I... So we were on um, the not good with money. We went over that. Mm -hmm. Okay. She does have, a, like, she calls it Rachel's Quick and Dirty uh, Guide to Thought Work. And uh, I love that because she um, has, 
she has a list that's like your broke thought and then your millionaire thought. It's like how to change, if you're thinking one way, how to change that into the positive ad of it. And it's like the world, the, the broke thought is the world is unfair, so I'm not going to bother trying. And I've heard that. I have definitely heard that. And the, the millionaire thought is the world is unfair fair, and I'm going to be a millionaire to make the world a better place. You can always flip and then she has another one. I'll never get out of debt. And then the millionaire thought is I'm capable of changing my situation. And she has literally has a list that you can go through and then you can create your own list. But I think that's, that's best for you because you feed your own self thoughts exactly. that maybe other people don't feed themselves. So even if that, you know, whatever that thought is, because she even gives an example of not even just money issues, you feed yourself mean thoughts about your own self, you know, whether that's your looks, whether that's whatever about yourself, you can always change that thought by switching it to, you know, your millionaire or your, you know, I, I consider my own cheerleader because sometimes you get in your mode, you be like, you know what, girl, you cute. <laughs> That's right. I say you. I say you all the time. If you can't toot your own horn, who will? Right. <laughs> <Toot your own. laughs> but I'm like, okay, now you 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 gotta get off of yourself. You did this. You did this. You you looking good. So I have to uh, pat myself on the back sometimes. So like, you have to be your own cheerleader. You do. The chapter two. Okay, this actually I had to think about, and this gets into a lot of statistics chapter two it starts off with a quote that i really had to dissect and because i couldn't find the context to it mm -hmm. because let me just read the quote it says um well the chapter is called a million dollar lies and the quote was we'll we'll never solve feminization of power until we solve masculinity of wealth Mm. What does that mean to you? Because I want to tell you what it means to me because I was trying to take it in the context of what it was saying. Was it taken out of, you know, something she was giving a speech about? I could not find that. And what was, what I was confused about was the, the word solve within this, well, within the first time, we would never solve the feminization of power. And I really had to dissect that. So what does that mean to you? And then I'll tell you what it means to me. Um, what that means for me is that only men can make money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, women, we aren't smart enough to be able to support ourselves and provide for ourselves. Right. That's how I took it. So I had to dissect it because I was like, girl, I, I'm an analyst that, I mean, mm -hmm. that's just me. I analyze that because I wanted, I want to know the meat of it because mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like I knew what she was talking about it. But when it comes into the uh, feminization, the masculine, like the fem feminization of power, that in itself is like an oxymoron in our world. Mm -hmm. So like, when I said I dissected this, so what I got, I said, Feminization is usually not equated to power. Mm -hmm. We don't equate that. Even in, in when you're growing up and you little kids trying to diss each other, like you a sissy or you, you know, you acting like a girl. It's not equated to power. The, the, so in feminization, um, it, like I said, it's kind of like a, that is an oxymoron. Feminization and power in itself is almost like an oxymoron. So when I think of this quote as a whole, and I don't know how, uh, like I said, I, I feel like I know the essence of what she was trying to say, but I feel like it was so much deeper. So I broke it down as people would never see feminine, uh, fem what am I trying to say? Not a feminism as power until we disseminate the idea that wealth is not synonymous with masculinity. Because if you even think about it just in our everyday spaces, um, if you are too feminine in, in what they consider feminine, like the soft approach, the smiles, to make you feel pacified or comfortable in my presence because I'm feminine, like, and they already say that black women, you know, we overly, we were too masculine at times. So feminine means that soft approach, that soft hand, that, you know, just to cater, that catering nature. So that in itself 
is not how most people can get ahead in business. Exactly. So when you see women getting ahead, they they say that she's domineering, that she's overbearing, that she is, you know, whatever. Aggressive. Aggressive. The B word, you know, is, yeah. is, is it's like you know when a woman is assertive. Is yes. The word, we're 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 labeled the B word, but when a man exactly. is is a man is labeled um what's the word um driven is driven, what they use yeah. for a man it's, so it's the same yeah. thing but same this, thing. right so that's i feel like that's what she's saying it's like mm -hmm. when we dismantle the 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 mental narrative the i think that that imagery of what feminism looks like mm -hmm. the, what feminine list feminality looks like what does that look like when somebody says feminine what does that look like because that should mean, you know, a driven woman too. Exactly, and, and, it, and it should be strong. It should be a, a driven woman, but a strong woman. Yes. So you know, it, I can be feminine and be yeah. soft and loving, yeah, but exactly. I'm also strong and, and I'm also assertive not, and, and I'm driven. Exactly, and so that's I feel like dismantling the idea of what feminism looks like or uh, being feminine mm -hmm. um, until we f see that feminine equals power as well as masculine equals power we yep. will never see that what was the, the quote um until we uh, re, uh resolve um solve the masculinity equals wealth so because because of that it's like i was making it like a, a equation in my head like mm -hmm. a equals c since a equal and that would make a equals c if you can disseminate and make power equate to to feminism you can then see how that power can turn into wealth and not equal masculinity because mm -hmm. like i said the traits that they think is masculine are the traits that usually get you ahead and become uh -huh. wealthy but the, the traits that make you feminine and docile will get you you run all over mm -hmm. and you won't get ahead so that's how i seen like i said I, I went deep into that because i was like this is a deep quote like, <laughs> it's like, like i had to read it over and over again and i was like i see what she's saying but i feel like there's so much more to to what she's saying it's like the characteristics like i said of masculinity is what men think women take on when they become leaders mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And to get ahead when those those same traits can most definitely be um, a woman's traits we're just using them we're using them the same way and they should should not be seen as masculine just because i'm assertive exactly or I, you know a strong leader exactly or have a negative connotation with them yeah. because again when we think of of a, of a driven woman or an assertive woman, mm -hmm. it oftentimes society looks at us in a negative way, exactly. as opposed to a man when he's driven. Oh, mm -hmm. got a boy! Hey, dude, no right. job, right? Exactly. As opposed to us, oh, she she a bee, and that mm -hmm. we every name but a child of God because right. we, we are <laughs> right. after the bad just like they are. Right. And then along with this, it doesn't get, I don't think it gets into that, but I don't mm -hmm. remember. It's almost like we're undesirable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and, unless and, you have a strong man. Yeah. You and, and you know what? Man. And a lot of times, uh, a lot of times men are intimidated by mm -hmm. our assertiveness. Exactly. And, and it's, and it's really sad because if they were smarter, mm -hmm they will understand that i you know a driven woman is the best one best kind of woman that you want in your life because it because she can see things in you that you can't see in yourself mm -hmm. and she is going to she's going to push you mm -hmm. to be the best version that you can be exactly but if you see her as a threat right then at the then at the end of the day you're the one that's going to lose out because because an assertive woman is not going to sit around and continue to go through the BS and continue to allow you to hold her back because she knows 
what she, what she wants and she knows exactly. what she desires. Exactly. You know, um, and a smart man would shut up and fly the train, right? <laughs> you know, or get beside her and say, "Hey, babe, what can I do? Hey, you right. need me to pack this order for you? Oh, good, baby. Do you need right. me to send emails?" And instead of being her adversary, be her, be her. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Instead of being her adversary, be her, her partner. Yeah. And 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 Ooh. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I found your cash app. I don't want, I want you to get all of the blessings. Is it still dollar sign your name? Oh yeah, it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Dollar <laughs> sign. Hey, everybody It's dollar sign and her name. So please bless <laughs> my sister. Okay. So, um, what you're saying, I'm, I'm putting, okay. It's my first and last name. Is that yep. it? Yep. Um, but it's iron sharpens iron, yeah. and we're not telling yes. you to be emasculated, we're telling you to be a partner because all of us have strengths and weaknesses. Exactly. So my strength might be the mastermind over a business, I might just have a good business um expertise, and you might be good at organization, or you might be good at building websites, or you might be good at learning helping me to see how okay you got this big this big master plan but let's see how to break it down so we can get these all you, whatever that is it's like it doesn't have to be a competition I'm exactly uh, uh, it, and i see that sadly i've seen that you know people that either were interested in me or we had a, not all of them, but you see where it almost becomes a competition of exactly. like the, the competition of the minds and who's smarter and who's, mm -hmm. who's got more attention and who can, who can, you know, you know, keep the attention of a crowd more. Like if you don't like, like we both have our strengths and weaknesses, like, and if we're both in the same area, we can tag team this thing, baby. You exactly. know, it doesn't have to be a competition. Exactly. And exactly. I, I hate it when it, that it comes to that, but I've seen a lot of that. It's like, doesn't have to be that. Mm -hmm. We can, we can mm -hmm. both be strong because we're, we're not going to be strong in the same things. And then we're not going to be strong at the same time. Exactly. Sometimes exactly. I, I need to want to be in that feminine nature. Exactly. That, that, that what stereotypical feminine nature that I want to be, you know, the lady and I want to be, the I want to be the nurturer. I want to be, I always say, I want to be the soft place for my husband right. to land. You know, because I, especially if you're, if you are married to a black man or a man mm -hmm. of color and whenever he leaves out this door, you don't know the hell he's had to go through when he's let, when he's outside that door. Right. Right. And when he comes inside, I want to be the safe space where he don't have to worry about nothing. That's where I want to be. Right. Have that. Right. I want to really accentuate that feminine energy that yeah. the Lord has allowed me to have, you know? Um, and I think, Go ahead. I'm sorry. And I think sometimes um, men get intimidated by that because they only see the other side of you, the driven side of you, that, you know, the, the one that's after the bag. Mm hmm. And they, it's like, and then it's a, this is a whole nother conversation. I know, girl, we're going to have, yeah. We're gonna, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, oh, I'm, gotta, I'm, gotta, gotta, I'm, I'm sorry. Sure. We're gonna have to talk about the book, but I, this is so good because it's so many different layers. It is, but this is good that you because that's where the partnership comes in. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Because we want to be that safe place, but the thing is, sometimes he's not in the like. Say he comes home, you have to be that soft space, and then you also have to be that protector for people not to come in and mess with them at that time. Exactly. Cool. So to honor my my softness and my warrior nature, because in my lioness nature, because I have both. You gotta exactly. respect both. Exactly. Because I'm gonna protect you and not let nobody come in when you're vulnerable, but I'm gonna be that soft space for you to land if you let me be. Exactly. If you allow me to. Yeah. Yeah. So Girl, that's we are getting on out another day. <laughs> this, is <good. laughs> this is good. This is good. This is good. So, um, where is she going? Oh, this was the 
There's what page are you on, sis, so I can kind of join? Because I have it up here on my phone. 26. 26? Mm-hmm. So it goes down, uh, and I, at the end of the, well, the first full paragraph, it says, sis, this will never happen again. And she was talking about a situation that made her like this. I don't ever want to be seen in this light again. Oh, I've had a situation like that. I think we all have. I don't ever want to be seen in this light. I don't ever want to feel that vulnerable again. I don't ever want this to happen. So I got to get myself together. And she was talking about when she first started her her business um, uh, as a, 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 a online law firm. Mm-hmm. And she had her first corporate client and she was waiting for this check to come in because she had bills to pay. She had a baby that um, needed to be in this, this daycare, but it was like the best daycare in the area, but it only had this one opening. So she had to put this uh, payment on it. And she finally got the check after waiting like two months to get this check. Oh, wow. So she went goes to, you know, the bank and she's trying to deposit and the lady tells her, well, okay, well, we have to freeze this check. We can't cash it right now for two weeks. And she was like, getting like, oh my gosh, like I got bills to pay. I've already waited too much for this check to come in. And she was all, she said, she whispered to the, you know, the, the teller. She was like, is there a way that you could take the hold off? And she was like, is it out of state check? So I have to get the, basically the branch manager. And she felt like she was just antsy. And she was like, this older white man comes out and she was like, like, Basically, my the the my fate right now in this very moment is in the hands of older white men. And I I and she said I did not like that they were going in, and that's what they had to go in and see her for. She said first she came over there and was talking to her. She was like, I'm a lawyer, this is going on. I'm and you know, pleading her case. Mm-hmm. And that makes you vulnerable in itself. It's like, why do I have to plead to anybody? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. this is my mm-hmm. money. And she just felt so vulnerable in that moment. And then mm-hmm. they're looking through her bank records. And she was like, I'm mad that I made this purchase yesterday about uh, it was some type of purchase. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I and she, they ended up releasing it. But she was said she never wanted to be in that place again of being that vulnerable and having somebody in control of her finances that she was like, I never want to do that. And I had a situation. It actually, that was right. The time about the time I met Rhonda, mm-hmm. I was living in Round Rock. Mm-hmm. I this was kind of on my own doing in a sense too. Something you know, everything's for a reason, and it worked out. But something was like you don't. Need, I was working for a law firm at that time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was a toxic environment, it's very, very, very toxic. Really, uh, and it wasn't necessarily towards me. It was just in general, but. I was like, I feel like what it was coming for me. You know, you see it happen to somebody else and you're like, mm. and then you see it over here and then you're like, eh. and it's mm-hmm. like, it had to hit you yet, but mm-hmm. this is toxic and it doesn't seem like they very interested in black folks here. And like, <laughs> it was just very, I like, I just didn't like what I was seeing. I didn't like what I was feeling and I had low money. And so I heard something was like, just get out of there, just quit. Mm-hmm. And I didn't at first. I was like, I ain't got nothing to back me up. Like, I don't got a real <laughs> job. But I kept on hearing and it was in the, my gut. Like, mm. just got to get out of there. So mm-hmm. I listened. Um, and I started looking for a job. And I went to um, um, Texas. Um, work source. Where, work Ron, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's where I met Rhonda at. And, that, and mm-hmm. that's fun. But everything started spiraling quick. Like, yeah. like um, I uh, I can't remember because it was, that was, I want to say, no, this is not June, but maybe it was the end, it was October, maybe. Mm-hmm. And um, I started looking for jobs. I couldn't find a job, whatever, whatever. And then, like, it was just literally, like, out of nowhere, like, they had an eviction note on, on my door. And I was like, wait a minute. And mm-hmm. like, and it, bo- it bothered me so bad because I pay my bills before time. That's just, that's how I live my life. Mm-hmm. And it was like maybe a couple days late. And mm-hmm. I was like, it's a couple days late and you got an eviction. <laughs> like, you, like I, I was upset because I'm like, you know, like I've been living here 
Uh, this amount of time, I've never been late. And you gonna put an eviction notice on my door after a couple of days? Like it was just spiraling real quick. And then I went to these different organizations for help and ended up getting it. But it was just the fact that how people look at you and how they treat you, treat you. And I was like, and it was only like, I got help from, with my rent. I had my disability come in. So that was, you know, for, for VA that paid for food and stuff. But, and then it just, I um, went on USA jobs. I got the job. Uh, well, got in the, uh, I got a government job, got that at a different position there, but and it went well. So it ended up working, but in that little bit of like two months time or mm -hmm. maybe even a month time, mm -hmm. it was, I was like, I do not like how people are viewing me because I felt mm -hmm. like they viewed me as lazy. And I'm like, I'm not lazy. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a lazy person. I actually like working and just how people viewed you and then, then it, all the information they want from you just to help with assistance, you know, for your, you know, and I get it because you got people that will take advantage. But and it was like, I remember the one person that I was like, oh, your rent is high. What you mean? I could have, I was like, I, I could have, like, it was, yeah. it was just like, I feel like, I don't ever in life want to be in a situation again. I don't want anybody coming through, you know, what I pay and how I pay. And I don't want anybody looking at me like I'm just this incompetent woman that doesn't know how to deal with finance. I'm actually very good at finance. It's just this brief season in my life that mm -hmm. this is not going in the way I want it. And then from there, from that point, that one said that was October of 2018. I got the job of the, in the company that I am now working mm -hmm. for the government at the beginning of um, 2019. From there, I was able to buy a new car just because because I work hard. Uh -huh. I got a job and I got two promotions within not even six months of each other. That's mm -hmm. how like I've showed myself. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. able to buy a new car. I was able to give away a car. I was able to buy a home. Like I was I made I made it a point to do what I needed to do because I was like, I am going to stabilize myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that would never happen again. Yep. So if you got a situation, well, you said the situation. You yeah. Yeah. That. With my, my check, I was like, this will never happen again. Right. Yeah. yeah and, and, you know, and it's like, and I think that's what's so important that we have to remember that we determine our financial future and our financial destiny. Mm -hmm. Only, only us. Right. You know, and, and again, if you want to be a, if you want to be a millionaire, you can't hang out with a mm -hmm. government WIC recipients, nothing against WIC recipients. Cause yeah. I got WIC too. Right. All right. I get but you have to be around millionaires. So mm -hmm. that means you, you may have to sacrifice and not buy those red bottoms or not buy those right. Nikes. Right. You know? It's true. And that, that's about this year. I'm lit. I've been saying it for years. I'm very intentional about what I do, and especially this year, because I know where I want to go, even mm -hmm. with different relationships I want to cultivate. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I got to be intentional about what event is coming up? Who's going to be there? Mm -hmm. Who do I want to, because, um, you know, what, if you have business, I know I want to do government contracts. Mm -hmm. So I want to put myself around people that are doing government contracts or know how to obtain government contracts, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And let me just, look at, I'll have, I think I know somebody that does do government contracts. Let me look mm -hmm. through my stuff. Um, who is that? I'm trying to think I'll, I'll reach out and let you know. But there's somebody that that is into government contracts and that sort of thing I can connect you with. Okay, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next is this. Um, mm -hmm. she talked to, of course, she talked about her story. It says, never again will my financial situation be so um, precarious. Never again will my daughter's needs be at risk. Never again will I let the future of my family be decided by anyone other than me and maybe my husband, but she said, but mostly me never <laughs> ever again. I feel that I totally feel that because that's the worst feeling. It's the worst feeling. 
And then she said that year after the situation, my business revenue went from sixty thousand dollars to three hundred thousand. Isn't that awesome? Is that year? girl? Can you, you know what? Get you? Yeah, girl, that's awesome. And it's a word go. Um, I did it by um, focusing and building wealth and fully capitalizing on my sellability. A sellable experience and expertise and that's another thing we go i was talking about um intellectual property sometimes we don't understand that the things we deem easy is not easy to other people that's right and, and they will pay you for it they will pay you you can monetize that and that's what we need to get to what are we giving away for free mm -hmm. that we can monetize mm, 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 mm. Um, wow and the well, um, I don't, I'm not going to read the rest of that. A uh, study from uh, Starling Bank found that the message about women and money in media, media largely assumes that women are excessive spenders and men are financially successful. And this goes into a lot of statistics. They found that 60% of money articles in women's magazines define women as loose with the cash. <laughs> women are advised to limit, restrict, and take better control of shopping splurges, to seek discounts, cut coupons, and save their money. We women uh, um, <coughs> apparently need to rein in and rent it in and shop, stop buying all those <laughs> lattes, whatever. And, and it goes into a lot of these assumptions mm -hmm. about women in this chapter. Mm -hmm. um, on the next page 27, um, the second paragraph, um, second, mm -hmm. the median um, geared towards men. The message assumes financial success and encourages men to invest spin and take financial risk in order to achieve power. So the messaging is totally different when it comes to men and women. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's been the program. Yep. So I'm not saying all of it, especially like we, we have to own our stuff, but a lot of it is just like you said, you're a product of your environment or you're a product of your programming. What is, what is always forced at you? I would say we were born into a, a very deceptive world. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of propaganda, and we have to dig our way out of it. Yep. In yep. every area. Every area. Every area. And that's what I feel like I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And on page 28, the last paragraph, we are taught that our financial goals are too big and that we are inadequate to accomplish to accomplish them. We are taught that we are asking for too much and we are not worth the amount of money. Oh. That just Isn't hit that crazy. That hit me somewhere. Right. <laughs> and um, and then on top of that, we are taught that we are not good with uh, managing money. These um constant messages from our families, the media, the popular popular culture keeps us undervaluing our work and underestimating our ability to make buku bucks. The scariest part is that these messages are reiterated by our government in the form of laws. And she goes into this and breaks down a lot of laws. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go to um, page 31, um, the last two paragraphs. Separate economy isn't only determined by one's ability to own property. Because she gets into, I'm going to go back a little bit, gets into literally like, Women didn't have a right to vote, which of course, if you have the right to vote, you can put who you want in place. You can put, you can be able to dictate, okay, th th they're speaking to the cause I want to. to exactly. Vote. Yeah. So you're not doing that. You're getting, not getting laws and regulations and, mm -hmm. and whatever enacted in your area to benefit you. Mm -hmm. Not only would that be the case, women weren't able to own homes, have credit cards, um, you know, get uh, get loans, any of that without a man mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. like the 1960s, if it was, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Mm -hmm. And then um, I didn't realize, and I don't know why, maybe I did, but just it just was fresh. They were talking about like the inheritance. You married, and your your family passes away and leaves you an inheritance that went to the husband. 
your inheritance that you went to him. Yeah. Went to him. It didn't go to you. Mm -hmm. So think about, and she was saying this, and this is where um, picks up at after say, um, where I was at, mm -hmm. like after, like we have only been financially able to be free, not free because that, that program is still in us since the 1960s, or I think that's what it was. So less than 50 years. Yep. Or almost no I'm, okay what is it 1960 yeah it looks like she said uh women had only had 50 years yeah and, yeah 50 so years. you think about but in that 50 years look what we did look what we've done yeah so think about that you the men and i'm not, not i'm not trying to you bash men but at the same time men had all this time to do what they need to do in and, and fix, you know, economic situations and, and, you know, will, you know, speak truth to power and have money to back it and look where we're at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not horrible, but it ain't good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? We can mm -hmm. still thrive and live, yeah. but it ain't, it, it ain't good. It's not the, our best. So picking up after all of that, she was like, separate economies isn't the only the term only, isn't only determined by one's ability to own property and vote. In 1963, the United States passed the Equal Pay Act, uh, requiring equal pay for equal work. But as we know, 60 years later, Latina and uh, Native American women are still making only 54 cents and 57 cents, respectively, on a white man's dollar. Wow. Crazy. And black women only make a 62 cents on that same white man's right. Body. And white women make 79 cents. So we're still behind. We're still, still behind. behind. I'm going to go to the next paragraph. It wasn't until the 1960s that it was common for a woman to have her own bank. I think about that because I'm, I'm, I was born in 78. My mom was born in 48. And and you going back to this conversation about having autonomy and how the the power struggle is now with men and women. Mm -hmm. It's that way because we are now able to own us, able to have autonomy over our own. This is 60s. You know what I'm saying? My brother yes. was born in the 60s. Uh -huh. It's not that long ago. No, it's not. You know what I'm saying? So before that time, women were not able to, you know, have a full autonomy over themselves. And I feel like, especially these up and coming generations, they keep on bucking. And I'm not yep. saying it's all right, because some of the stuff you were like, ooh, calm down. But a lot of the stuff is really true. It's like they mm -hmm. keep on bucking the system. And it's like, no, that's not right. I don't like it. No, it's not right. I don't like it. And mm -hmm. if you're not going to pay me my worth, I'm gone. They, they yep. keep on bucking the system because mm -hmm. it's a power show. But now, because now we're like, I'm not going to put up, with, whether it's in the workplace or in a professional place, I'm not putting up with this because I don't have to. Where yep. before women had to, they had to have a man in order to have economic status or mm -hmm. economic security, where mm -hmm. now we don't. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of bucking of power when mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be, but mm -hmm. there is because mm -hmm. a man doesn't understand like, I understand over all this time, you didn't have autonomy over yourself. So you will, you want your own, but you still want to feel, feel like a woman. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want you to say, oh, the feminist movement and, and made y'all all mask. Come on now. Yeah, See, exactly. No. You've been through a struggle, just like, especially marginalized men, you guys been through a struggle. And once you have your freedom, you want to express your freedom. You don't want to feel like you're owned by somebody. Exactly. I want to be your partner. I want to be your cheerleader. I want to be in this race with you, but I don't want you to think that you own me. Exactly. Feel exactly. Like that's the power struggle. Okay, I digress. Let me go back. <laughs> <laughs> Let me read this up. It's, it wasn't until the 1960s that it was, it was common for a woman to have her own bank account without a husband, a father, or brother involved. involved. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Go down to the next paragraph. <coughs> mm -hmm. The Equal Credit Opportunity Act was passed in 1974. That, 
That was four years before I was born. That was two years after I was born. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> to see how how incurred this was. And okay, go back. The Equal um, Credit Opportunity Act was passed in 1974 and prohibited lending discrimination based on sex or marital status. That that just mind boggles me that that was that soon. That mm -hmm. was that current. And I'm going to jump down to the last sentence. Therefore, women have only had equal access to mortgage, credit cards, loans, the wealth, uh, and the wealth these financial in, uh, instruments can help generate for less than 50 years. Isn't that crazy? Isn't so that crazy? that's why we got to give ourselves grace because we're literally dismantling a system in exactly. our own hands. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Because I think the other part to that also is you got to think back in the 60s, the man was was the provider for the family. Mm -hmm. And so the woman, like remember I told you, barefoot and pregnant, that was the expectation. Right. For us. And so I think prior to 1960s, our role was as the homemaker, as the help meet, as right. you will, and not necessarily a provider. Well, times have changed. And I'm sorry, honey, but I can I can go buy the bacon and cook the bacon. That part. That right? Mm -hmm. And buy everything that's needed to enjoy the bacon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Girl, this has been so good, but I'm gonna try yeah. to wrap this up really. So we've been going on for two over two. Girl, hours. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, this is this is this is good. <laughs> thank you so much for this opportunity. This was oh you're welcome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you for being on. I yeah. appreciate this. Yeah. She goes into a lot of different um mm -hmm. either even obesity, you know, um, discrimination and all kinds of other um, situations that, you know, women have to face, even like more attractive women get jobs before what they deemed as unattractive. Yes. So it's a lot that goes in there. Again, we're disseminating this mentality in our, on our own heads mm -hmm. and being able to, that's where at the beginning where it says, you know, being able to have enough money is like, I don't even want to be at your table. I'm going to create my own. Um, exactly. And have money, our money practices are different than men's because we've had different experiences. So exactly. when we generate wealth may be a little different. That's why we need to create our own rules of generating wealth. Exactly. So that goes back to all of that because we've literally just been in the game for 50 years. Yeah, so literally. Literally. And, oh and then God. when you talk about, and then when you talk about black women, we haven't, it's even less. It's even less. It's even it's less. less. And so mm -hmm. I think that's why it's so important to have forums like what you have, mm -hmm. where you bring, where you, where you talk about these things. Right. And you bring, bring awareness about these things. Because right. again, you, you know, you can't expect to be a millionaire, millionaire is what I'm going to say. I like right? that. <laughs> yeah. Unless you are around other millionaires. Mm hmm and they may they may or may not look like you, um, but you still have to take take advantage of the opportunity. And if they won't let you have a seat at the table, girlfriend, create your own table. Create your own. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Exactly. And now it's exactly. like I don't want to be. I don't want to be anywhere where I don't feel like. They, well, where I'm not, well, I don't feel accepted. Exactly. I mean, why, why would I want that? I'm not going to push for that. I feel like we were taught to push our way into corporate and push our way up the ladder and do this for what when i can create my own exactly, exactly. I, I don't want i don't want it to be in a place where i'm always bucking it's always a struggle exactly. like if i'm being a struggle let me be on my own struggle of getting ahead not just that i'm literally fighting because you don't even want me there mm -hmm. my presence disturbs you that's mm -hmm. a problem Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. let me create my own so exactly. I'm over here and <laughs> so i won't be disturbing your peace just because exactly. I'm with some melanated skin exactly and, and i ain't got to come out of character <laughs> right right <laughs> and then you start <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta remember they already afraid of us anyway because remember right. they're driven when <laughs> they're when but when when they're assertive but we the B word when we're assertive. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing. However, <laughs> because of this right here. Right. Right. 
it is it's just sad and then we got it double as a woman in general women get it and then as a woman of color we get it double exactly so, girl girl this has been amazing so when we when will we have the next one do you know um, that? We're gonna have a next week. I'm gonna end with these two things on the la on the page 35. Uh -huh. um, the quote at the top says, "Women have own, uh, only had 50 years, and of already have women, and we already have women millionaires and billionaires and a presidential candidate candidate." So what I, this is probably made when Hillary was or whatever yeah. we have yeah. Hillary. But we do have Kamala as our vice president. Exactly. And we do have our first uh, black, yes. black Supreme Court nominee. Yes. Yay. Exactly. Right? And That's you true. can't deny that is a sister. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, so time it ain't is a it really so it's is. changing in that little bit of time. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're saying. Like men have always been that. They've always been in their, their situation. But us in this little bit of time, we do leap, we jump leaps and bounds. And we can really, you imagine what's going to happen in the next 50 years with us? That's what I'm saying. I want to be a part of that. This is what this is all about. Yep. I want to be an intricate part of that and for myself and actually leading ladies on. That's what the empowerment firm is all about. And then, like I said, I have my niche as far as, you know, women that have been in service, military service and, and still are because I, I just, they just near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. Um, but women in general, mm -hmm. I want to pull us up. I want to keep on pulling us up until we you can we can have our own whatever, whatever we want to create, we can have our own. And I, I felt like again to to speak truth to power effectively and be heard, we need economic backing. We need to wield an economic sword at them, like we, we do. So I understand that. What'd you say? They understand that. Well, all they understand. Follow what would they always say? Follow the money trail. Yep. When something happens. Follow the money trail. Yep. In everything. It it even sadly say it's, we're gonna go for with you know military sexual trauma. Uh huh. If that affected the military monetarily to a great great length, it will be changed. Hello. And people will be cross will be prosecuted too. People will be and it, it wouldn't be swept under the rug like it is now. Under, exactly. If it affected the military on an economic monetary level at a high level, it will be changed. Yep. But since they don't see it, it won't. Yep. And it was, and if it was more men that was affected, oh, yeah. it would definitely be changed. Well, yeah, you right about well, girl, that. Girl, we gonna get, we gonna get off in on another rap material. <laughs> oh, the yeah. last thing it says, our next move, and we're gonna end it at this is forgiveness. We need to forgive ourselves. We, uh, take some time to forgive yourselves for thinking you're not good with money. You are. We just have to learn it. So with that, thank you ladies for joining. We're going to, I'm going to send out another invite. We're going to read pages three to six um, to finish out the first part of this book um, next Saturday, same time, same place. And uh, we'll be in touch. So thank you. I appreciate you and we'll be in touch. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs>